Okay, I have another question. What did I encounter basically at the Krishna movement that I couldn't deal with? Okay, was it corrupted even when Prabhupada was alive and running the show? Yes, there were things there that took place that I absolutely would not engage in. And uh, it, for that reason, I left. The spiritual, what did he call, spiritual trickery, you know, that, uh, you know, when they would go out and they would hand somebody a flower and t have them take a book, really push it on people, and then want money, you know, and then say, you got to give me some. And I mean, they were very... Uh, very pushy about it and uh you know i'm sorry no that's that's not uh, acting with integrity or honesty you know so uh i wouldn't uh go along with doing things like that and the fact that people sent their children to these guru cools to school i said i have a child it's my responsibility i brought her into this world it's my responsibility to raise her and sure enough come out later there were pedophiles you know and that happens with a lot of these so-called spiritual ashrams these kids get in these guru cools and they are left to Lord knows who, okay? So uh, these type of pedophilia things have happened across a lot of so-called spiritual places. You know, if you have a child, it's your responsibility. You know, that child came to you, came through you for a reason. So it is your obligation to try to give them what you can give them, you know, uh, for guiding points and to go forward in life, etc. Okay. So, it, yeah, I wouldn't send my child to a guru cool and I, I wouldn't uh, go out to, you know, do those types of uh, things, erroneous things. Uh, so that, for one, um, then I saw later what happened was uh, when Prabhupada was alive, he wouldn't allow any chilies in the food, no uh, black pepper, no onion, no garlic. All of those were forbidden in the food. And the minute he passed, they started putting chilies in everything. And there was a reason why, uh, a spiritual reason why, they weren't allowed because the food was supposed to be given to Krishna first and then you take the leftovers, you take the what's left over, okay? And Krishna is supposed to be all bhakti, so they don't want to put in things that are causing uh, this energy, higher uh, fiery type of energies, okay? So that's the reason that in the Krishna uh, consciousness, the food is supposed to be more bland and sweet, like sweet, like Krishna, bhakti, love, sweetness, you know, all of these things, you know, so that one can contemplate what one is eating. Why is it like that? Okay, because Krishna is supposed to be a love aspect, a bhakti, you know, not fiery, not, you know. So yeah, in that modality, you know, it's supposed to be done without onions, without garlic, without black pepper, without red pepper, without green peppers, no chilies at all. So again, I saw that and when I went to uh, India and I went to pay my respects um, where they had put Prabhupada. I was appalled to see that they were putting chilies in the foods and things. So they were very much dishonoring the path, dishonoring what he had given. And again, he wasn't giving the whole of the teachings. Like I said, he held back. He held back on it. And so um, that's another thing. But again, I didn't discover that until far later down the road. You know, I thought he was giving the whole of it, you know the Bhagavad Gita, the whole teachings.
but no, he was just giving um, the part that most people know. He wasn't giving the Uddhava Gita. You know, the Uddhava Gita came later, and the Uddhava Gita is talking more about, um, uh, about non-duality and going on, going beyond being, uh, being um, clinging to an external persona of Krishna, okay? It's about understanding that that energy is the same, you know, so it, it goes into a deeper level, but he was not giving that part of those teachings, okay? So mainly that's what it was about for me it was about the way that they were collecting money and they called it spiritual trickery, okay? And uh, I, I'm sorry, spiritual trickery does not work here, you know. Just as when I was in the uh, esoteric order, I left for uh, specific reasons. I was there uh, I was there a very short time bef before we, before uh, the Kundalini was activated, you know. And some other people had been there for quite some time, and it ha wasn't activating for them. And, uh, you know, so uh, what happens, you know, when the Kundalini activates, you go from wearing a black cord to a blue cord <laughs> on your outfit. So... They know who's got Kundalini activated and not. And then people started getting a little, you know, jealous and pissy and this type of thing. And I said, this is not about jealousy. This is not about that type of drama. All, all I want is my search. All I want to do is get to, you know, get to the end point, get to that. And I just didn't want to deal with jealousies and dramas and things that were going on, you know. And, uh, and again, it wasn't too long after that that um, Father Blighton passed. And at that point, they went through a schism and the whole thing um, disbanded. Some went to more Gnostic things. Uh, Mother Ruth tried to, I guess she tried to hold things together, but she was not in that position of knowing like Father Blighton was. She didn't have that energetic thing. She, she wasn't able to... Uh, do the things that he could do. But, um, and the other part split went to uh, Eastern Orthodox, Greek Orthodox. They became Greek Orthodox priests. So some split went to Gnosticism, the Sophia, and the other part went to Eastern. Um, so there was a big split there. Uh, and I had left before that, uh, again, didn't want to get involved in it. Um, had heard one of the other guys that was further up was getting into some dark things and trying to bring it in. Again, I don't need that. Um, <clears throat> and this is another reason why I have not constructed a physical ashram because of the politics and because you get those in there that want to be power hungry you know, that want to take over, that they'll do underhanded things. You know, I don't want to deal with any of that drama. I'm not going to have it on this path. This is why, and you have to walk the path by yourself anyway. So this is why I give the teachings. I have an online ashram. Everybody is in their place. If you want to walk the path, you've got to put it into place yourself anyway. And this cuts out the politics of an ashram. It cuts out somebody trying to overtake an ashram uh, with, you know, with their drama, such as happened with Osho and Sheila and all of that drama, okay? So this just cuts out a lot of those behaviors that take place, okay? Power struggles and dramas and nonsense. I said, we're not having that, okay? Those should not be a part of any path. We don't need that. Okay. So that's why I haven't put into place a physical ashram. Okay. So uh, anyway, so I'm trying to think what's, what were the other. 
Oh, yeah. I went for a very short time to Scientology very, very early on, and I stayed there a very, very short time. I just saw the inner workings and said, oh, no. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I was actually a Sea Org member, <laughs> so you were supposed to be there for lifetimes. And, yeah. No, I, I left very quickly. I said, no, 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 this is not... You know, I could see some of the uh, advantage of confronting things, but the way they were doing it, I said, no, 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 no. Again, bypassed it. So a lot of the things uh, along the way, teachers were actually elemental in showing me what shouldn't be there. So I don't care what teacher you go to, you can learn something. This is why you don't uh, go out against your gurus, against your teachers. You know, even if it's something there that you find out is not working for you and not, you don't go out and do these nonsense like some people do. They get their nose out of joint and they decide they're gonna go and put ridiculous stuff out there, okay? And that only goes to show their immaturity as far as their walk is concerned. Okay, so, yeah, so uh, again, you know, one goes through and does their journey and you learn from the good ones and you learn also from those that are not so great. You learn the things not to do or not to get involved in or you see some things that, uh, again, um, that could be done in a better way, okay. So I hope that's answered your question. Namaste. Have a great day.